But there's some people that believe that the DMT that's stored in your brain, when you die, that's people's perception of heaven now because now the week or whatever that you're actually dead, that your brain releases so much DMT at one time that it's enough for like eternity, like for you to keep remember or keep going through these dreams and like how you perceive the world and how you perceive the afterlife. Mm -hmm. And there was this other guy who was married, the wife died, he like embalmed her or something and left her in the bed, got remarried, him and his new wife slept in that bed had sex in that bed and shit with the corpse of his previous wife in that bed. Then she died and he did the same thing with her, got remarried again, but this third wife said that those bodies had to go away. They couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't, they couldn't be in the bed with them anymore. And uh, so he did, he got rid of them. And then she died and he embalmed her and did the same fucking thing. Are mediocre. Happy New Year, motherfucker! It's twenty twenty four. Hopefully, your twenty twenty four trumps your twenty twenty three. Get it? You see what I did there? Capital T R U M P S. Capital T. God, I'm amazed I spelled that right. You didn't. No? No, you said T R U M P S S. Somebody give you a hickey? What? Is that why you're here so early, Jeremy? You're giving him a hickey? Let me cover That could have been from Sunday night. Let me cover it up. Oh, Honestly, you giving him one on Sunday? Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were dancing pretty good. I saw that. You guys were. <laughs> I'm standing here. Doing the YMCA, and Jaden must have been taking a video, and I didn't even notice. But I'm doing the YMCA, and you were reaching over, poking me, in the poking his belly. <laughs> <laughs> I was he was showing me the video, and all of a sudden I see his hand come out of nowhere and start, start It's like I know that. I do hand. remember that now. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know you did it until I watched the video. Oh man, uh, good times. I wasn't there, but. Looked like good times. Oh, yeah, man. it was a good New Year's Eve party for sure. Yeah. It was, the, I think the best part about it was it was just like low key. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. It helps that you don't have a lot of friends. So like it was just a few of us here and half of the party was your parents and then, <laughs> yeah. and then your kids and yeah. then me and Kylie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we had a good time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I would have been there. We know. But I was busy. You were there in spirit. Yeah. You were there in spirit. Yep. Uh, speaking of not being there, uh, you were telling me a pretty cool story about like how there's still faith in humanity. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you should talk about that. So That's fucking sweet. Yeah. So I had to fly out from Minneapolis to Phoenix, and then my flight was supposed to land at like six twenty or something, and I was supposed to go out through security, get Bailey. And then come back, and our plane was supposed to leave at 8.55. Starts boarding at 8.10, whatever. So I was like, it's kind of close. But I was like, there's plenty of time to do all that shit. <laughs> and um, so I, the plane leaving Minneapolis, it, there was like some AC issue or whatever. And they were working out for like, we were on the plane. They were working out for like 30, 40 minutes or something like that. And then they finally came over the thing and said uh, that they had to order a part for it. So we're going to deplane and go to a different plane. I was like, fuck. So it ended up being like a two hour delay, two and a half hours, something like that. And got on the plane, finally took off, landed at like 820. Now our, our, our my pl other plane was boarding already, like 10 minutes prior to that. <laughs> and uh, I was like, fuck. So, I, so this lady, well, backstory, this lady I was sitting next to, we were talking like the whole flight. And I told her, you know, what I was doing, going out to get her, coming back, all this shit, whatever. Well, so got off the plane, ran fucking on the other side of security, got Bailey, said hi to Abby real quick, fucking went back through security, went to the gate. And I was like, we were running to the gate, got there. And the lady was like, were you just on another flight? I was like, yeah. She's like, are you the dad who left, went, got his daughter, came back and blah, blah, blah. I was like, I was like yeah. How do you, uh, did somebody <laughs> call you or something? She's like, no, the lady on the flight came over here and told us to 
to not shut the doors and wait. She told us what you were doing. She said, hold the doors. Don't, don't take off without them or whatever. I was like, damn, that's fucking cool as fuck. How sweet that's is awesome. That? Yeah. Yeah. This like, lady took, just didn't have to. She could have left, but she yeah. went to the gate I was supposed to fly out of. Took time out of her day. Yeah. To go find where your next flight was. Yep. And tell him like, hey. <laughs> don't don't fuck this dude's day up. Yeah. And they actually waited. Like they, they yeah. held the doors. Yeah. See, that's wild because most of the time they wouldn't. They'd right. Just be like, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, she's we like, go. she's like, I told her, I was like, we'll hold it as long as we possibly can, you know, but, you know, right. if we have to go, we have to go, or whatever. So, but yeah, so she did that. I was trying to find her on Facebook so I could thank her or something because I heard her, she was talking to the lady on the, on the end of the, the row and told her her name was Jessica Nelson of Phoenix <clears throat> area, somewhere in, in Phoenix. So well, she was like from the Phoenix area? Well, she was, I don't even know where she was from originally. I think she lived here and then she moved to Phoenix. Oh. And then she moved there in like March or something, but she's living there now. Yeah. Well, hopefully. So, tried to find her, couldn't find her. So hopefully she sees our podcast and you can give her a thank you right now. Oh, thank you. If you somehow find this or somebody. <laughs> 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 How crazy would it be if like she just randomly. Because of how Facebook and shit listens, how what if like our podcast gets suggested, suggested to her, or I'm like become then, a suggested friend or something? Yeah, and she like hears it. That'd be cool as fuck. Mm-hmm. Would be. Yeah, it's it's cool to hear shit like that because it doesn't seem like people shit does not happen. Do that anymore. kind of stuff. No. Yeah. yeah. Like, if it's if it's doing something for a total stranger, it's it's out out the door. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, maybe they're a weirdo with sex issues or something, and <laughs> he goes right to the- <laughs> right every time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, maybe he's a weirdo with a little dick and comes fast. <laughs> 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 no, but it, it's pretty so, cool that so that racer. she like wasn't even on that second flight with you. Yeah. Like it'd be different if she was, you know, going Getting to the hard. same gate as you. But yeah. I mean. Those airports aren't small, so no. she probably had to go quite a ways to a different gate to get to that one. Yeah, and and she, so I, you know, obviously I didn't tell her what gate. I just she just knew like what time I was supposed to fly out and what, uh, where I was going, obviously. And then she had to find the gate on the board, go to that gate, and then tell him that shit. I was like, fuck, man, it's cool as fuck. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I was so stressed out too, because the. <laughs> The security, there was, <laughs> there, was yeah. there, I was, there was nobody in line to up to security, right? Where you give them your fucking boarding pass and then you go through them and then you start going through like the scanners and shit, right? Nobody up to them. And there was probably like 15 people in front of me to go through the fucking metal detectors and shit. And it took like 30 fucking minutes to get through that, those 15 people because they were going so fucking slow through the scanners and shit. I was fucking pissed. I was throwing my shit in baskets and shit. It's like, and then, the, and then the fucking the escalator was broken, and we were going to the escalator. And he's like, "Gotta go to the elevator." I was like, "Dude, my fucking plane was starting to board like thirty fucking minutes ago. Can we just walk up this fucking? I don't need it to take me. I can take myself." He's like, "Yeah, go, go, go." Like, yeah, go, go. Dude, airports are just fucking. They can get so ridiculous. Yeah, I hate them so much. Yeah, and it drives me like. Oh, people who go th- are flying drive me fucking crazy because it's like they've never done it before. They don't know like the processes you have to go through. And then their shit will come out of the fucking scanner and they'll stand right there and there'll be nothing down the fucking thing. And they'll be standing right there at the end, blocking all the shit from coming out, putting their shit on. <laughs> yeah. It's like slide that shit to <laughs> the can, end. You can take your fucking tray and go to like a bench or something and just yeah. bring it back. They don't give a shit about those trays. No. Like you could walk around the whole airport with one. Yeah. Just take it off the belt. Or at the very yeah. least yeah. slide it to the end. You don't have to stand right there where the yeah. shit's coming out. <laughs> fucking eight people. My favorite's the fucking dildos that fucking try to pet the dog when there's signs everywhere that say do not pet dog. Oh, like the, the, the sniffer dog? dog. Yeah, there's signs thought, everywhere that are like, "Do I not." You were gonna dog. say, "I thought you were gonna say Dildo. like the dildos that people put in their bags and pull stuff, out and they, you know, they get oh, searched." Shit. Yeah. Embarrassing. That's going back in. That's there. funny as fuck too. I'm gonna need you to step to the side for additional screening. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're a freak, huh? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. What else are you hiding? <laughs> Follow me. We're gonna do a fucking cavity search. We're gonna do a cavity search. <laughs> yeah. So fuck. That was my. That was my New Year's. You know what's crazy about fucking, you would think, right? Like, 
flights that leave at like six when you got to be at the airport at like four o'clock in the morning. Every time I'm like, ah, it shouldn't be too bad. That's early as fuck, right? You <laughs> get there and it's like every plane's taking off at six. Mm -hmm. The busiest airport is at four o'clock in the morning. It's like, what the fuck? Well, I tell you when it's not is one o'clock. There was absolutely nobody there when I got off. One o'clock in the morning? Yeah, because we landed at oh, one yeah. in Minneapolis. You know what? Like, to, it probably isn't a bad idea to fly, like, those midnight one o'clock hours because you probably can get right in and get right out. But yeah. The worst part is if you have any, bit, like, any, like, layover at all, there's nothing open in the airports because those oh, places yeah. still shut down at, mm -hmm. you know, no yeah, whatever, business hours. 11, whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, if you need to get something for food... You're going to the vending machine. Yeah. It's, yeah. That which, sucks. Which I didn't eat at all fucking. What day did I fly out? Saturday? Yeah. Uh, Sunday. Oh, yeah. Sunday. Flew out Sunday. Flew out Sunday. Yeah. Didn't eat. I had one little sandwich from like Quickstar on the way there in the morning. And that was it. Because I was like, oh, I'll get Subway or something when I get Bailey when we get back. And we're waiting to get on our plane. <laughs> Well, we didn't wait. We ran right into it. So, <laughs> see, I usually try not to eat before I get on the plane because I'm terrified to like have to get up Oop. and take a shit on the yeah. airplane. I, Fuck that. I, it doesn't I usually eat. It won't suck you out. No, no, it's not about that. It's I don't like opening one, the door and gas the whole like, fucking yeah. plane. <laughs> no, not even that. Like one, it's I always try and get a window seat no matter what. Like I'll upgrade oh, and try yeah. and get a window seat so I can because. Lean aisle seats are all right, but I need to like lean my head on something. Yeah, that's what I do like, too. I, I have to. There's I a usually stranger wear, right next yeah, to you. I usually wear a sweatshirt <laughs> and then I ball it up as like a pillow and lean it up against the window. Mm -hmm. But like then trying to have, have to crawl over them and then be gone for like fucking 15, 20 minutes. Somebody else is definitely going to be in line waiting for you. Oh, yeah. And just like pissed off. You're probably going to have three or four people in line waiting. Yeah. And then so everybody on that fucking flight knows that this guy's taking a shit. And you walk through, and I feel like I already, like, when I sit on an airplane, I just stink. Like, it just, yeah. I don't know. I'm just so nervous of that. And The last That's time cool, yeah. the last time <laughs> I flew somewhere, I was sitting next to, like, this, like, older couple. And by older, I don't mean, like, 70, 80, like, probably, like, 60s, late 50s. Mm -hmm. And they were going on vacation somewhere, and I was talking to them for a little while, and I was in the aisle seat, and then... Uh, the husband was in the window seat and his wife was sitting in the middle. And about an hour into the flight, I'm sitting here and I'm like dozing off like this. And I feel something and I look over and this dude's wife is like, like leaning on me. And I like look over and her husband looks at me and starts laughing. And I'm like, yo, dude, get your wife. <laughs> and and he, before he wakes her up to tell her, like, she's snoozing on me, he pulls his phone out and takes a selfie <laughs> of all of us. And I'm just like, hey, <laughs> what's up? Yeah, she was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, you're all right. It's fine. <laughs> tell you the truth, I was hard the whole time. <laughs> yeah. You know, a happy ending could have been a little better than that, but, you know. Do you want to suck me off? <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want to suck me off? Go straight to that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I feel so bad for those fucking people that are just like six, seven, and 300 pounds mm -hmm. that have to sit on those seats. Yeah. It has to be fucking miserable. Oh, okay. Yeah. We need to start an airline. What was the last just, airline? You just for big people. Where Because the only way they're comfortable is if they buy a first class ticket, which is double, triple the price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just start a fucking big person airline, like like a Southwest, but for big people. Whereby they yeah. have to, have to buy the, two seats. What was the last yeah. air, air, uh, airline you flew on? Um, when was the last time I flew? Uh, last time I flew was probably out to Montana. I think we went Delta. Oh, Delta's good. Yeah, so, yeah, Delta's nice. So I was on a rash there of like flying, uh, like Sun Country or. Mm. That's what uh, I flew. What was what was that other Allegiant. one? Allegiant. Yeah. Ooh, it was yeah. Allegiant and Sun Country. And I won't go Allegiant all because all the horror stories, like between you and my brother <clears throat> and shit. Oh yeah, because the one time me and Jaden went through Colorado. Yeah. That's why you got and a we free were, flight. We were gonna come stay with you, but it was so late at night. Like we we're like we're not gonna fucking bother him, and it was like one o'clock in the morning. They bust us to a fucking hotel. And, mm -hmm. uh, but I was like, so many of those like Allegiant Sun Country type fucking flights in a row 
And then I flew Delta on this last work <laughs> trip I went on, and I'm like, no wonder they charge a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start paying a little more for my ticket. Yeah, yeah. this is way better. It is. And yeah, then you get a movie. Like, yeah, you get movies. You get fucking actually snacks every time. You get for free. Yeah, for you free. Fucking, some country charges you for a small ass <laughs> bag of fucking fucking Fritos and shit. You right. Know? I don't buy them. You get but. fucking leg room for get free. Get leg room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was that was the best part. They give you headphones room. every time. And the free. plane, the plane actually seems like it's well put together. Mm-hmm. Like you fly some of them, and like the seats are creaking, and like it just you look out at the wing, and you're like, hmm, that is that a bolt missing? Or what, what what's going on over there? Yeah, it's usually fine. Ninety percent <laughs> of the time, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, it's it's when you see a bunch of speed tape holding holding the panel together. <laughs> that's when you're like, okay, that could come off. <laughs> <laughs> They're limping that by for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't ever really get freaked out flying. We used at all. to have like, this turbulence uh, doesn't bother me at all. Or I've had some turbulence kind of be like, all right, this is a little sketch because you're, when you're like this and doing this shit, the, yeah, it's a little bit much. But <laughs> did did you ever use the pink the pink uh, like fuel leak goop? The you like mix it together and it's it's kind of like JB Weld, but it turns out pink like bubble gum, Mm-mm. and you use it for like panels that are leaking fuel. And you just smash that shit up on there to like seal in the leak until you can fix it. No, <laughs> just like to get you home, dude. I remember, I remember fucking we did that a couple of times. You mix this shit up, you got a panel leaking fuel, and you're like, yeah, not taking that off. We're gonna put this on there, and we're gonna go home, and you know, fuck, smash it up there. <laughs> All right, not leaking. First officer, come take a look. We're good. Let's go. <laughs> I've seen that on a few like uh, airplanes. For commercial. commercial, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing it out. Not even my terminal. I'm just standing there next to some guy like, hey, you see that pink stuff under there? Yeah, what is that? That's holding the fuel in. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> Although I will say, like, I saw on the news uh, that Japanese airliner that fucking collided with another plane on the runway and mm-hmm. fucking went up in flames. Yeah. <laughs> if I would have saw that before I was flying or so, I would be like, mm, Bailey, you're staying in Arizona because I ain't coming to get you. All the, all the passengers on the passenger plane that caught on fire lived. They got, yeah, they got All off. the ones that died. Do you know what the plane was that was on the runway that got hit? It was like a Cessna or something, wasn't it? It was a fucking uh, Japanese Coast Guard plane. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. And the Coast Guard plane got hit and everyone on the Coast Guard plane died. Really? All the passenger plane people lived. Yeah, it was like 100 people or something. Yeah, 180, Jesus. something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they say if you die in an airplane, and 99% of the time it's fucking operator or pilot error or well, air that traffic had to be, control. Yeah, that had to air. be communication error mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Like, yeah, somebody went, how do you, somebody pulled on when they weren't supposed to and... Or, you know, somebody told them to pull on when they weren't supposed to and next thing you know, people died. Yeah. Anyway, in, in Jap in Japan, the guy running the air traffic control, he's probably hanging by his neck till dead. Right it's now. Japan, not China. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's just going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you will hang from your neck till dead. <laughs> uh. Anyway, okay. So we left everybody on a cliffhanger. On a cliffhanger. On a cliff note. So I'm so glad that we're coming back to this because this is a total mind fuck and we're going to dig into it and get it like super mind fucked, even worse than it already is. Super mind fuck. But uh, first off, I want to go ahead and thank Chris Angel super mind fuck. from the men's grooming lounge in Alcona, yes. Iowa, uh, because she brought this story to my attention last time I was there and said, hey. You should talk about this on the podcast. And she was explaining it. And I'm like, that sounds fucking crazy. Yeah. So if you haven't heard of this yet, it is called The Lamp Story. And it was a story that was put out on Reddit by the gentleman that it happened to. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's been people that I guess have reached out to try to make it into a movie and the guys said, yeah, go ahead if you want to, but I'm not going to be a part of it because it's still too. Yeah. He said, take, take it, take this for whatever and do whatever you yep. want with it. It's open, open source story. Yep. Take it and run with it, but I don't want to be a part of it. It's too traumatic for me. So yeah, 
I'm going to start by just reading the story. The whole story? It, it's not that it's not that long. No, it's not, but I, I did some uh, some notes from it. Make it a little shorter if you want. Uh, some, a summary, you might, if you will. A summary sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, I can skim this too, I guess. I'll just skim it and hit the keynotes of it. Okay. Because I got the whole story right in front of me. So do I. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you okay. Okay, okay. All right, so this dude was walking, college campus, college student, and he got assaulted by a football player, college football player. Correct. And he said he was what? Like the college football player was like 300-some pounds, and he, he was, was like a buck 25 or something. It he says here he was 120 pounds, and the college football player was like 325. Yeah. So while he was unconscious, he experienced like this alternate life, right? So he met a woman. Pursued her, got married, had a daughter, had a son. Had this this whole fucking life, right? He had a full full for, time job, for, a career had a full -time that job, he yeah. was successful in. Yeah. Uh he went about. to work every day and like he had a whole routine. This is while he's knocked out. This is while, while he's, he is he's unconscious. Out. So yeah. from the fight. So, so from the fight, it, the the time he was unconscious was minutes, probably. Right. But this time frame in his mind was like 10 years. Yeah. Or some shit. Yeah. It says the, uh, well, I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but yeah, he said basically the last 10 years of my life is what he said. Yeah. Uh, so, and then one day, right, he noticed this lamp. It had like, it, had, it was like a strange perspective of it, right? In his living room. In his, in his living room. Yeah. And he would, he sat there. He was just staring at the lamp, staring at the lamp, couldn't look away from it. Stopped going to work. His wife was getting all worried. Eventually, he stopped even going to the bathroom, just staring at this lamp. Just something about it wasn't right, right? Uh, and then he woke up, basically. Well, the lamp eventually, what he said, Went the away. lamp started to, like, get bigger mm -hmm. and bigger and bigger. And the lamp, like, filled the whole room, basically. And all he could see was, like, this one small portion of the lamp and then all of a sudden he could feel pain and started hearing and voices. he started hearing people talking yeah and that he was coming back yep. from being knocked out yep he woke up on the sidewalk cop drug him into the fucking cop car and took him to the hospital and this dude he went through like a three year period of just depression and you know PTSD and shit from basically from like losing his family cuz you know he he lived for 10 years with this family that he had yeah, and so he was he was all fucking depressed and going through fucking therapy and all this shit to get rid of his fake family and all this stuff, and he even like like degreed the loss of his imaginary wife and kids, right? Yeah, and uh, like sometimes like he says he he occasionally sees glimpses of his imaginary son who appears like about five years old, but he can't he can't hear anything he says, you know? Like imagine like in a dream seeing somebody and they're like talking to you and it's just yeah, you know just. Mouth movements, no he, words. He, like, catches glimpses of them, too, like, during the day, like, out and about when there's people around stuff. He'll, like, look and he'll, like, think that he sees his five-year-old son, and then he'll look back, and he's not there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's so... That's crazy, because, like, how can he go back? Like, that would be so hard to go back to a normal life, because, like, it almost, to me, sounds like it was a, a dream, mm -hmm. essentially, and it sounds like he was living the life that he essentially wanted made or was like dreaming of. Yeah. And so then he comes back into his actual reality. One doesn't know if that's actually fucking right. it's reality. Like, it's like or inception, what. Right. right? Where he's like, is this real or is it right. a dream? Or and then two, like, what if now the wife you have now is like, well shit, she doesn't even compare to the one that was in my dream. Right. Like, if he has do I, I don't even know right. if he has a wife or anything now. So when I when Sarah was talking about this, I was like, that's that sounds crazy as fuck, right? So then like I read the actual story. Um and I was sitting there like, how fucking crazy. Like, what What if what if that's going on right now? What if this whole podcast, you guys and my friends, like, my wife, my, what if, like, 
I'm still 21 and I just fell off the top of a camper because I was drunk trying to act cool and, and never went I to still haven't woke up yet. Like, <laughs> yeah, like nothing has, has, as I know it, you know how fucked up I'd be if I woke up tomorrow and I was like, the last 10, 15 years of my life wasn't real? Yeah. I don't know how you could cope with that and like get out of that funk. I that don't, would be, be really fucking hard. I mean... I tell you what, I I learned a lot of fucking valuable life lessons in these fucking fifteen years, though. Sure, but those were in your head. Yeah, at that point. Yeah. So, well, at that point, like, is I mean, it would it even help you? I don't know. <laughs> like, what if what if everything we're doing right now is just like not normal society? This is like yeah, the world that you decided in your head how it should be. In the real world, there's no fucking internet. Yeah, or, you know, or some or some stupid crazy shit like, like that. You're still back in the day where there's like. Cell phones are still flip phones. Smartphones aren't real. Or there's no flip phones. Just no imagining cell phones. them. Yeah. Man. Dude. See, that's why. Have you ever watched anything on, like, DMT? <clears throat> and, like, DMT is, like, naturally released in your body. Like, and so, like, like the drug from DMT? your brain. Yeah, but your body, like, naturally, like, so it said that when you dream, that's, like, your brain releasing, like, DMT, and that's what oh. that's what makes you, like, essentially, it's, like, a psychedelic trip. Yeah. And you're dreaming of shit that's in your head, but, like, it's making it all weird. And usually when I dream, and, like, I'm in, a, like, a really in-depth dream, towards the end, just like this guy, towards the end, before you wake up, it starts kind of, like, not weird. making sense and getting yeah. weirder and weirder getting and then really all of a fun. sudden yeah. all of a sudden then in the back of your head you realize like oh i'm dreaming and wake up yeah and that's probably what's like, wrong with him like he was starting to realize somehow that like this lamp can't be doing this right, right. and he's and that's probably like his his subconscious or whatever was like this is a fucking dream or, or yeah. something you know come on right. wake up yeah wake up time to come back yeah but there's some people that believe that the dmt that's stored in your brain when you die that's people's perception of heaven now because now you within you know the week or whatever that you're actually dead that your brain releases so much dmt at one time that it's enough for like eternity like for you to keep remember or keep going through these dreams and like how you perceive the world and how you perceive the afterlife you see that's so. what that's what i've always wondered too like what if heaven and hell and all that all this stuff right when you die all it is is you dreaming and so whatever it is right. that's on your mind or whatever you like people go to hell because in their mind they're like i'm going to hell or whatever and then they dream up their own hell or heaven right. the same same thing or or wherever you know or they're just essentially in like a nightmare and well, yeah. then that but it lasts forever forever right or well you know you're having a really fucking good dream and it lasts forever i mean yeah. and this like is, that's what this is a perfect example of of what the human body is capable of right mm -hmm. this this dude ended up having well over 10 years what he assumed was 10 years of his life in the matter of just minutes mm -hmm. yeah does you it know? say how long he was out it said it just for minutes. it said just for so long enough for yeah. him to, like, for him to get drug out onto like the enough for a cop to show up and try and the cop drug him into the back of his cop car and to take him because he didn't he didn't seem like he had enough time for the ambulance to arrive. Yeah. So yeah, so like maybe cop. he was dead for a little bit and it actually <clears throat> did release a little bit of that and you know maybe. ten years worth. That's. That's a long fucking Dude, time. Yeah. The, the the thing that, you know, is so hard to think about with this, right? You're just like, oh, come on, dude. You woke up from a dream. But, I mean, I woke up from, like, really fucking graphic dreams that I thought were 100% real. And it's like, you know, if they only seem like they lasted, like, an hour, you mm -hmm. know, or I'm in the dream for, like, an hour. But if I was in that dream for fucking... 10 years yeah i could totally see how you wake up and like like in like you can't catch your breath because your kids and your wife it's like it's like they died you know what i mean it's like oh and you're talking about his, yeah, yeah like in his example like it your kids and your wife that you spent a life with are gone mm -hmm. just gone well have you ever had sleep paralysis whatever where like 
you feel like you are wide awake, but Can't something's move. going on and you just cannot move. Dude, I've had it a couple times. I once in my old apartment when I lived in Ames, and it was like, like I felt like I was wide awake, just normal, everything looked normal. And then somebody like broke into my bedroom and like I tried to move and I couldn't. But like I knew that I was like it was fake for somehow like yep. I kept waking up and like shit, what the fuck? But then as soon as I'd lay back down, it would happen again. Yeah. And like it went on for what felt like fucking a couple hours. Yep. But it might have only been five minutes. I don't know, because eventually I did completely fall asleep. But, like, it felt so real that somebody was, like, coming in and holding me down on my bed. And mm -hmm. it was wild. It, yeah, I've, I've never had, had those, that, but I've heard, I've heard of that. I've yeah, had it was those, fucking wild. But I feel like the, the times where it gets really fucked up is when I feel like I'm, I'm, in, I'm having a dream within the dream. You know what I mean? Like, in, so my, in my dream. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, where something like that'll happen and and i'll like just wake up and i'm like <sighs> okay it was just a dream and then it happens like again like mm -hmm. boom and then i wake up and i'm like usually by that time like i wake up and like my body feels like just a weighted blanket like i fucking had been sleeping for 10 years like mm -hmm. i just wake up and like holy fuck was i just in a dream inside of a dream i was like i better not do that <laughs> I better not do that. <laughs> I get fucking stuck. Dude, one thing know? I want to know with this dude is does he like the people that he his family or whatever, are they like completely made up people? Or are those people that like he's seen before or like somehow met back in the day, like as a kid growing up or something? And like I don't know because he just like had that in his head. I, I don't because I've definitely had dreams, right? Where like you know, there's just random parties with people, whatever. And I'll see their faces in my dream. And I'll, I think to myself, like, after I wake up, like, I've never seen, like, that girl. I've never seen that girl before, as far as I know. You know what I mean? Like, right. That's what I mean. Like, that's, yeah. So I was, I've always wondered that too. Cause, like, you may not notice, but you, your mind, like, grabs a picture right. of them and it, in the, it's in there somewhere. Like, did he so, randomly have a college class with this girl so yeah, and, see, like, never talk to her, nothing? But the kids thing and, would be hard, right? I feel like. Because, yeah. you know, they're born. You, you just – a random baby you've seen on TV or something or your kid Yeah, maybe. Or like, and you then, know? Or, like, you walk by this same mom and son every day going to work or something and you don't – never spoke to them, never realized it, but, like – you're like, oh shit! I I know them just from passing by or what? Yeah, it, I don't know. He it doesn't say anything about recognizing them in real life or or at some point he had seen them or you know. But it says you know when I I was grieving the loss of my wife and children, dealing with the knowledge that they never existed, I was scared that I was going insane. And as I would cry myself to sleep, I would hope to see her in my dreams, but I have never seen her. Uh, and sometimes I see my son, usually just a glimpse out of my peripheral vision. He is perpetually five years old, and I can never hear what he says. So it's just like, I, I don't, he doesn't give enough information on like if maybe there was, but I got to thinking about that after I first read this. What if this dude, right, is like going through an airport somewhere, going to travel or do something, and sees, like, his wife? Or like, see, actually sees like these people. Sees, They're actually real people. Like, it's a real That's person. What, saying, like, what if he sees his wife somewhere where, like, all of this traumatic shit that's happened to him, and, like, really, like, he can't go up and say hi or, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like. How are you going to walk up and be like, you, this is going to sound really crazy, but you are, you're my wife. And like, you know what I mean? Like, Probably wouldn't go up to her and say that. Well, exactly, I know, but, but how, I mean, and imagine. They, and then they actually like, fall in love and then live happily ever after. But what if she's got a husband? She dumps him, obviously. No, but this is, this is, see, we got to make a movie out of this. Yeah. And <laughs> they're going to fall in love and it's going to be like the notebook. 
Never seen it. Just a love story. I don't know how it ends. It's probably nothing like the notebook, but I'm just talking <laughs> uh, like like a love story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Notebook esque. <laughs> yeah. Dear there John. you go. Huh? It's a dear John ending, is what it is. Yeah. Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. That's a so, that's a bad ending. So what if he <laughs> runs? Okay, so let's go down this rabbit hole. If we made a movie on it, right? How fucked up could we get it? So like, <laughs> obviously this happens. No, do not right? bring in the children. No, no children. No, no, we do not <laughs> want to touch children in the movie. But <laughs> he meets her at like an airport, right? And like walks up and says, "Tells her the story. Mind, of what happened? Mind if I sit down? Can I buy you a drink?" And they're at like the airport bar. He goes through the story and explains to her like, ah, you are the one. You're my wife. From my, This is what happened to me. And they get together and she's like, it's funny because I have a daughter and a son and they're this age or whatever. And their dad got killed uh, walking down the street because he got a shit beat out of him by a <laughs> college football player. And just like go in circles with it. Yeah. Like, like all, all of a sudden, yeah. like his life was like a glimpse and flash of like what happened to her her other husband and then like he meets the kids has the kid come up to him and, while they're in the airport and say dad like and, on accident and the kids, <laughs> yeah like the kids are like what he saw you know what i mean like gets his family back and then you know they finally like they get things moved together and they come together and they live together and he starts like working on his life and then he wakes up from like Falling out of his hospital bed after he got beat up, <laughs> and like he was in the dream again. And then surprise twist ending. Surprise it was twist aliens. Ending. <laughs> aliens it was, was aliens. controlling the whole Ooh, thing. It was with aliens their, with the mind control and with their fucking flashing their memories and shit. It it zooms back. And there's two two little green Martians playing Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna got say, you see what his I did kid, there, Marp? His, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say his kid grows up to look exactly like the dude that beat the fuck out of him. To make him start it, the, yeah, there you that go. That'd be wild. Mm -hmm. And or, then that kid ends up beating the shit out of somebody, and then he it's becomes like a fucking yeah. cycle. He just, becomes a college football player. Yeah, dude, we could just keep making movies on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. just all <laughs> part seventy six. Yeah. <laughs> be like the Fast and the Furious. Just yeah. keep going, <laughs> getting crazier and crazier. <laughs> Turns uh, out it was a hoverboard that hit him, not a football player. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys want to see this movie, we're gonna need a little funding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like we got some work to do. Yeah, yeah. This is this was a, a crazy one. I, I thought about a lot of this shit for like quite a bit. Just how fucking nuts. Well, would, would your life be, you know? I think you should look up. I think it was, I saw it like 10 years ago. I think it was like Joe Rogan. And it might have been five years ago. It might have been three years ago. Talking about DMT and how, like the releasing of it and stuff. Because it's very similar. And like it connects dots there where, fuck, huh. that, actually, <laughs> that actually might be. I've always asked that question too. Um, you know, how how do you know that, you know, when you die that that's not what happens right off, right off the get-go you know what i mean and because they always say like the people that have died and like came back to life or whatever mm -hmm. they have their stories they of have like these stories of what happened and i was floating above my body and i could see what was happening yeah and, but you know like how what if that isn't just like part of their this. your your brain's yeah. just doing that like death procedure and that's what happens when you die and you just get this like whatever your mind creates is what it is kind of deal and yeah one of them I, it was like this it was this guy died for however long and he he uh what was it exactly some entity like you know pulled him up to this space or some shit and it's like you get you have two paths really you can go back to earth and humanity and shit or you can go home where you're actually from or where you're supposed to be or whatever like that you know some other reality or something and it was like i don't know if it was like him going back to his body or like reincarnating as something completely different or going back to home whatever that is huh like that was his version of you know death yeah and that's why it's like it, it makes you wonder like if about this shit like if it is just people's dreams essentially like you, that the afterlife you know you, you know i I'm a firm believer in, you know, the whole, like, energy thing where, like, energy is 
is not destroyed. It's just transferred. You know, like when you die, you could plant somebody's body in the soil. It becomes nutrients. That nutrients feeds a bush or a tree or whatever, and then that brings life back into something else, right? So I, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, that we as energy will thrive on forever, but like our cognizant memories and everything, like somewhere along the line that disappears, you know what I mean? And we go back to like something that we didn't, we don't have any, you know what I mean? So like you were saying earlier, like you, you die, right? And your fucking brain's flooded with this DMT shit and you're living out this, this afterlife for eternity, which is what it feels like, right? Well, what if you're, you know, whatever in your body stops doing all that shit, right? So it's basically the end of eternity. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. so what's after that then? What do you think is after that? Yeah, I see that. I don't know. That's Just and nothingness? That's when the dark. But, that's when but the they say that, happens. like, from what I heard on this, and I don't, like I said, it might be Joe Rogan. I don't know if it was or not. But... What I heard on it is like it's enough to just like last forever. So that's where I mean, there's it's got to run out at some point. So it has to like, <laughs> but so see, I don't when, know when yeah. you don't when you don't release that though. Like think about when you go under like for anesthesia. How many have you ever had surgery on anything? Yeah, or been knocked out? Did you have a dream, or do you remember having a dream? I didn't. My mine was like. I went to sleep. I, I remember counting down or whatever, just, going to sleep, and then waking up, and it was all done. Yeah. That's how mine went. Yeah, right? I don't remember ever that's having the a shit, dream in that. That's the shit that scares me about, like, death. Because, like, if somebody can put you to sleep with something like that, and you just, you're done until you're awake, what if you're not awake again? I mean, you're just. Just done. That's it. There it is. <laughs> you mean what if you're dead? Yeah. Like dead, what? Yeah. <laughs> Could have just said that. <laughs> what if you're just sleeping forever? <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> hey, you know, they're like, all right, count backwards. You're in the room. <laughs> and, and then the next thing you know, you're waking up. No, I think that's a, I think you're that's right? a possibility with every single surgery is mm -hmm. the anesthesia could, there's a possibility that it kills you. Yeah. But, well, <laughs> you it, don't, you just don't wake up. But you that's don't. what I mean. Like if you don't have like a release of like, DMT that like puts you in that like state. Oh, well, well then, I think, then I think essentially that's when like once your, your brain has the lack of oxygen, that's when it, oh. it starts releasing it. Like oh. when you're not breathing anymore and that's when it releases. Yeah. I almost it. feel like your body would know to release. Cause like, like this guy, right. He said he did, he didn't, obviously he didn't feel any pain or anything until he started to like wake up again. So it was almost like a self-defense mechanism, like get this in him so he doesn't, you know, feel pain. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, like if I'm I'm saying like if you were dying, your body would almost know. Isn't it crazy that you can be alive and unconscious and not feel a fucking thing? Yeah. Like somebody can be beating the living fuck out of you. And if you're unconscious, you're alive, you're breathing. Don't know it until you wake up. But all the nerve endings that are still feeling the pain just aren't your brain's just not letting them come in mm -hmm. how fucking crazy is that yeah dude the body's weird we're getting we're getting a little deep here we are getting deep <laughs> yeah not That's... as deep as i want to get <laughs> we should no, 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 i was just gonna say i'm talking about my dick <laughs> I was just going to say, we should knock Brandon out. And while he's unconscious, I'll stick my wiener in his butt. See, here he goes again with the yeah. raping. And then <laughs> and then when he wakes back up, we won't say anything. We'll just see if he makes a comment about, like, his butt hurts. Now, here's my question. <laughs> if you're banging someone when they're unconscious, does that make you a necrophiliac? Unconscious? Yeah, like they're, let's Are say, they like unconscious in a coma. not breathing or unconscious breathing? Are they unconscious with a machine breathing for them? Doesn't matter. They're unconscious. They're if, they're alive, but they're unconscious. They don't feel anything, know anything. If they're unconscious, but they're does that still make breathing you a necrophiliac? The, no. Are you if, sure? If they're hooked to a machine, I think that's where the line is. Okay, now you are. 
But if why? If they can't breathe on their own, it's just what well, classifies as necrophilic. Do they have to be? Well, they got bloodless be, and cold. I and, guess they got to be dead. But do they? Well, that's what when you're unconscious like that. You're what's just, the definition? Oh, yeah, look it up. You're basically like a dead person. Right? Um, hold on. Uh, Can you look over his shoulder and see how he's spelling this? Nec- oh. <laughs> turn, I, turn, I, it, I, turn it a little bit. Let me see. <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> It probably changed it for him. I think it changed it for him, yeah. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) You stop it. Necrophilia, sexual intercourse with or attraction towards corpses. So they have to be defined as a corpse, okay? which is dead, lifeless, probably cold. Look up definition of a corpse. Uh, We're getting a little crazy. No, I'm curious now. (laughs) I'll look it up. I'm curious if Brandon has a new title or not. Definition. <laughs> no necrophilia. <laughs> well, yep, a dead body, especially of a human being rather than an animal. Hmm. So, yep, I guess they do have to be dead. Yeah. I only said that because he said something. I'm listening to this podcast called uh, Last Podcast on the Left, and they were talking about necrophilia. You guys should check it out. It's fucking hilarious. Not necessarily what they talk about, but, like, the way they talk about mm-hmm. shit. It's funny. So they were talking about corpses? They're talking about necrophilia. It was weird. It was funny. Necrophilia. Well, it was funny, huh? Well, what they were saying. <laughs> Real <laughs> they, funny. They, they were talking about how uh, I can't remember exactly the context, but basically how <laughs> Joe Biden's wife is a necrophilia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, dude, there's a lot of fucking. There's a lot of graphic like horror stories that are. Horse. Horse. Yeah, horse stories. <laughs> With horses. Horses are scary. Uh, Where there's like a mother and a a kid, like a grown adult kid that's like still living at home. And the mom dies. And Mm. they're like, they're like those people that are like too like introverted to go out or do anything. And like their whole world crushes. So they they leave their mom like in the bedroom and they brush Mm -hmm. her hair and... It's just a dead corpse, and they like sleep with it at night. And there's shit. so there that reminds me. There's two stories like that these serial that these guys talked about, right? One of them was it was like that. It was like a kid and his mom, and mom died, and he did some weird sh- necrophiliac shit to the body, and like yeah, like reached inside of her from the v- vagina area and pulled out like intestines and shit and some weird shit. And there was this other guy Gross. who was married. The wife died. He like embalmed her or something and left her in the bed, got remarried. Him and his new wife slept in that bed, had sex in that bed and shit with the corpse of his previous wife in that bed. Then she died and he did the same thing with her, got remarried again. But this third wife said that those bodies had to go away. They couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't, they couldn't be in the bed with them anymore. And uh, so he did. He got rid of them. And then she died, and he embalmed her and did the same fucking thing. Crazy as fuck. What Wait, he, so he had three wives that died before how, he did. Yeah. So how do that's you talk, a little fishy right there. Yeah. And then how do you talk somebody? How do you talk? Three. Well, two people. Two. Three people, essentially. Well, yeah. To fucking marry you. Yeah. Well, after that, knowing. Two, yeah, the first one doesn't really count. After knowing this I'm still about working him. on talking someone yeah. into giving me a blowjob here. Like. <laughs> Let alone here or like, yeah, I don't, that's no, not gonna no, work not here. here, not oh. here. Oh, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> so like oh. here is in like, yeah, I know, I, I, I got what you're saying. I was just, but yeah, like, I don't know. That's dude, some of the shit that people, how do you do talk, just, how do you talk somebody into being married to you and sleeping in the same bed as your dead ex wife and I being fucking, like, I don't know. Two dead ex-wives. How do you? Two, like, well, the third one, she said they had to go. So I mean, because you can't. But just, I'm gonna stay with you. But you have two dead ex-wives. You can't it's, just. It's yeah, fine. But, but we can still get yeah. married. Yeah. What the? Fuck? You can't just like bring that up. Be like, oh, by the way, like. Well, I mean, he must have. Uh, you guys were like, like, I can't ease, part ways with him. I loved him. You gotta I like, love you too. But to it at some point, you know what I mean? Like, let's, uh, I guess. Uh, well, I guess maybe. Yeah, maybe went on a bunch of dates, or whatever. Like, got him to. Fall in love with them or whatever, and then unless like, he's just getting hey, married. By the way, heads. I have well, these bodies in my bed. That's, that like, I get that same question sometimes when like you see these sex offenders that have to register and then they're married again or they're getting married again. Mm-hmm. It's like, like you have to tell your neighbors or whatever. Like you got to tell everybody. 
like, you, did you tell your wife and she's okay with that or what? Like, I went to high school with a dude that just recent, like, 2022, April of 2022, he got arrested because he was dating. The, this happened in Ankeny. He was dating this girl, and they moved down to Oklahoma or something. Ended up breaking up, and she moved back to Ankeny. He put a tracking device on her car, found her, and like That's went weird. went to her part her apartment. She wouldn't let him in the apartment. Like she's like, "No, fuck you. You're not coming in." And he ended up like pounding on the door, pounding on the door, wouldn't let him in. So on those apartments down in Ankeny, they have, or I'll take I'm one. sure most of them down in Des Moines, Centuries. they have they mm -hmm. have these uh like the water heater and stuff or the furnace is out on the little deck that they have. Oh yeah. He crawled up on, she was like on the third story. He crawled up over to the deck, got into that fucking room there with the furnace and everything out there and fucking kicked a hole through the wall of the apartment. So the exterior wall and the fucking drywall inside got into the apartment and fucking like strangled and raped her and everything. And he didn't say a word or nobody said a word. Like the girl was fucking terrified. Didn't say a word. And one day the, like the maintenance guy came in and saw that there was a fucking human sized hole into the outside going to the outside. Yeah. And he asked her about it and oh, he didn't kill her. No, 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 no. That's, oh, where, he, that's like, where he fucked up. Yeah, strangled <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's Christ how you get God. caught. Dude, strangled her and, like, <laughs> raped her and videotaped it. Oh, so he God. videotaped it all. That's how you get caught, too. And so the maintenance, oh, guy, the maintenance guy came in and saw that and then let the landlord know and everything. And all of a sudden, the cop showed up. And, like, once the cop showed up, that's when she finally, like, broke down and started crying and stuff and told the whole story. The fucking guy got, got arrested and uh like the cops got his confiscated his phone and everything and found the fucking video on it yeah and whatever like he got charged with felony shit like that i don't know why he's not in prison i don't know what the fuck happened because our system's but, broken yeah <laughs> fucking absolutely broken he was charged with like five felonies and he's not in prison right now and i just saw on facebook get three ow that, i see how much time yeah. you spend in jail mm -hmm. well i just saw on facebook but now he's like engaged to a girl and like is having a baby with her i'm like how like she's got to know that story i would assume how, so how like stupid can a person be well i will say because there's a lot of fucking weirdos out there that will they like idolize people in prison like fucking uh charles mm -hmm. manson had, yeah. had like all kinds of fucking women fame and well, he got married in prison by some fucking crazy bitch out, outside of fucking prison you know yeah Dude, there's there's a lot of people who are like totally uh Richard M Ramirez, right? The night yeah, stalker. Yeah. That you've seen how his busted ass people, looks, right? And people fucking were in love there with him. There were women, yeah, yeah, women in love and he was like raping everybody. Yeah. Didn't kids didn't matter. It, it was just it, people are fucked up, man. It makes right? you wonder like what goes through people's heads when it, like I wish you could be a well, it's like the old expression: "Be a fly on the wall," you know, and just like yeah. eavesdrop on like somebody having that conversation and just see like how they how they react. Yeah, like how you know was it mean? when like, he when he told this girl, or like is he lying to her? Like does no. does she not know? It has, she to, has to be. Know. It has to be public record. Yeah, it is. Like I can look him up right now, and I he's, mean, it says the first four things says registered sex offender, mm -hmm. and it says all his charges. But you get five felonies, you're not in prison. I yeah, mean, that's yeah. For fuck's sakes, you date a girl for two weeks, and you can be like, "Oh, I'm going to, I'm going uptown to the bar with my friends," and she'll te she'll text you like an hour later with like your exact location. <laughs> How? I mean, of course they're gonna look you up, especially if you're like, "Hey, I'm a sex offender." By the way, <laughs> they're gonna be like, "Hmm, I better look that up." They're gonna know yeah. every detail. So you're a freak, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what if it was she was one of those fucking people who likes the whole, you know how people bondage, have their fetishes, shit, whole bondage yeah. and like fet and uh, like rape fetishes and stuff like that. Maybe she was into that kind of shit and like that's her. That was he, he was and her maybe, jam. Maybe that's what he needed to like not do it so like against somebody's will was like somebody that's just into it. 
Yeah, he needed to find somebody that was into it and not do it to the yeah, I see yeah, not do, not it, do it, to it to somebody the girl that mm -hmm. didn't want that. But yeah. I'm gonna say if he's if he's like a rapist or like you know extremely violent and shit like that, eventually, even if he does have that with that chick, whatever, eventually that's gonna bore him. Yeah, and he's gonna just go find something else. Yeah. Or whatever. But, well, or it'll be like fucking uh, unless you just had some weird thing for that first girl or whatever. Well, I think, I don't know what it was. Like, I haven't talked to him since he, like, moved away when we were junior in high school or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I always hated him. Fucking absolutely thought he was a douche. Mm -hmm. But uh, apparently he I was. Think, yeah. <laughs> apparently I, like I was were, right. You were right. <laughs> and I think they were together for a long time. And then I think he probably got, I mean, this is me speculating. Like, Speculate. I think he fucking got abusive, though. And then that's why she's like, I'm fucking out. Mm -hmm. because I've heard that it runs in the family for that one. Mm. Well, you know, apple doesn't fall far from the tree, they say. Right. Well, and I don't, I mean, who knows what, what the background story on that was, but any time I personally see or hear of somebody that, like, went down in that road, it's never going to, it's never going to change. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he might be at, if you look at all the stories of these serial killers that, like, they get caught once and then, like, do their time, they get out, they do it again. Yeah. It's just a matter of right time, right place, or they get smarter about it where they don't get caught. Same with what the... serial killers have went to prison and got out? Well, I guess what I was thinking about was <laughs> uh, the Ted Bundy. Oh, so he, he didn't go to prison. Yeah. Right, I mean, but... At first, like, he, he caught himself, like, okay, I need to stop this. Like, it's getting too much. And he was, like, scot-free and clear for, like, 10 years. Didn't didn't do anything. Had, had a family and whatever. And then all of a sudden, one night, he just decided, oh, I'm going to get back into it. Fucking, there he was. He was back into it. After 10 years of... You know what I really miss? Raping and murdering. <laughs> I should get back to that one of these Same days. with... Uh, <laughs> What was the other one? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the one that they just Jeff Jeffrey Dahmer. If you look at if like when you listen to the story of Jeffrey Dahmer, he like got carried away and like okay, pull yourself together here, buddy. You're getting too out of hand. And then he took a hiatus for a couple of years mm -hmm. where it was he was just good. He was just living and doing his thing. And then it was all of a sudden one little thing triggered him. He's like, nah, I'm, I'm going to get back into that. Yeah. And then he got caught. And I don't know how many of them actually go to jail and get out, you know, because most of them are there forever once they're caught. But. Yeah, I don't think any, any of them, you know, aside from people like the Zodiac Killer who never got caught. Yeah, but I mean, you know, there's just so many of them that, yeah, take a hiatus because internally, like, they know they're fucked up. They're, what they're doing is wrong. And they'll take a break, and then like, how long until? I don't know if if internally they know because they're usually like sociopaths, psychopaths. They don't they don't fucking feel remorse or any of that shit usually. Well, yeah, I guess I'm only going off of a couple cases. Yeah, like Jeffrey Dahmer, he fucking he was totally aware of what he was doing. Like, it was fucked up. He's like, I know it was fucked. I just couldn't control myself. Mm -hmm. It's like, how, you know, how long until they do it again? Like the guy you were just talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it's going to happen again. Probably. It's oh, just yeah, gonna I'm take sure the, it is. And one take... way or the other, maybe not as extreme as the first time or, or whatever, or but maybe, it, or maybe it's worse, you know, you know? but like it's probably going to start out a little mind, like not as extreme and then get worse and worse. I don't know. How did we it's... get out of this conversation from the guy who um... got beat, beat up? I don't, I don't, yeah, oh, I don't you, know. Oh, you, you were know. you were talking about banging dead people. Yeah. Oh, necrophiliacs. You were saying, yeah, yeah. You, were, you were saying you wanted to fuck dead people. Got, I never, yeah. I never said that. I remember that much. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe we should do an episode on serial killers because it's kind of fun. We should, dude. I love serial killer shit. Into the mind and of a serial killer. Have you the new latest craze? Um, the Gypsy Rose. Oh yeah, girl. she's out of out of prison. That's fucking, that's you know, pretty nuts. That's wild. Some people get mad at me when I say this, but I don't feel like she should have went to prison. Um, I mean, you still plan to kill somebody. Like, that was... I mean... But granted, I don't know that she was... She's not fucking... 
she was raised to be a 10 year old child well into her like late teens early 20s so like her mental capacity wasn't she was medicated she was fed to believe that she had all these ailments and she couldn't walk and was in a wheelchair for a while and and she was just perfectly fine yeah and then i mean i i feel like her mother getting killed was like self-defense kind of i mean i agree i I don't know that I think obviously the the guy that actually killed her mom for her. Yeah. Like, all right, dude, you can't yeah, you <laughs> you you go to prison. You nah, just you're a fucking idiot. You just, but <laughs> you let, I honestly don't remember this the story to the to the T very much. So like essentially um her dad or her mom and dad had this little girl gypsy, or whatever, and then uh her mom left, basically right? well Give mom, the tears, mom gypsy the mom basically like took off took her. away yeah. you know but blamed it on the dad just leaving but he kind of wanted from the way it sounds is he wanted to be part of her life but the mom wouldn't ever let him like see her or mm-hmm. anything well then like in order to get money and stuff they her mom made up all these ailments like she was treated for leukemia and this and like she was paraplegic or whatever she had all these um deals and she was like getting money from make a wish and all these different foundations just like rolling in some pretty big checks from all these foundations because you know and gypsy was like the face of a lot of these and didn't like gypsy was homeschooled so homeschooled she didn't really teach her anything the mom like hoarded her yeah mm-hmm. it, it was like a hoarding obsession like with her daughter like like wouldn't let her go outside she couldn't do, do she, she couldn't do anything as a kid couldn't leave like, the mom's site yeah. couldn't even have like a facebook account or anything it was you know it was all controlled by her mom and in order basically she wanted from the way it sounds it just wanted her to be a child like relying on her the entire time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then uh she ended up like sneaking out through the night and like creating a Facebook account and meeting this dude online. And like, they had a relationship for years and then like had to sneak, like her mom would take her to a movie and like the guy had to sneak in and like sit next to him. And that's how, and they ended up like sneaking out. He went to go get popcorn and she went to the bathroom and ended up like fucking in the bathroom stall. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> while her mom was still in the movie theater and yeah. then they planned to, they plotted to kill her mom and, yeah, he she, snuck in one night and and killed her. And she started to realize like, oh, this isn't her. Like boyfriend was like, your your life is fucked up. It's not right. And then all of a sudden, it was a plan, and this dude fucking shanked her. So why is he to blame then? <laughs> yeah, well, he's he killed her. Yeah, well, yeah, um, he pretty much killed yeah. her in cold blood, but. Yeah, I don't know. I've I have i have not watched the actual documentaries on it. I we just we just finished watching uh the act on Hulu, which is a like drama about it. Mm-hmm. And it's a pretty good TV show. It's kind of it's fucking weird. Just I mean the whole yeah. situation is weird. But yeah. again, it's like you watch that and you sit there like how the fuck does some woman trick doctors into thinking her child has leukemia and like gives them chemo treatments and like you would think these doctors would be like woman you're fucking crazy well she was a she was a fucking a thief so she like would steal like prescription pads and write her own fill her own prescriptions and Mm -hmm. all that shit so like the doctors actually didn't prescribe her anything i don't think i mean maybe some stuff for like i know she like had a feeding tube in but she could eat fine yeah. Like, um, so obviously, the obviously the doctors had to, had to put that in, but I think it was just like, oh, she has really bad acid reflux or whatever. And, you know, just, she keeps complaining, keeps complaining while well, she never complained, but yeah, it's just, if you told me to take somebody with me to the doctor and, and sweet talk the doctor into giving them a feeding tube, I wouldn't know where to fuck to stop. <laughs> I like. He, he needs a feeding tube. <laughs> he needs a feeding tube. 
Somebody get this man a feeding tube. <laughs> All right, son, we're going to take you upstairs. There's a floor that I think you're going to really enjoy. It's got some padded rooms and some soft boys you can play with. Like, did you say soft boys? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think, like he, I think he did. What is with you? <laughs> I think he did. With us? You're the one that's saying it. I said soft toys. Sure you did, buddy. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. Coming from the guy that's got a rubber dick's dress ball. <laughs> I don't have it with me. <laughs> it's, under, it's under the table. It's here in spirit. It's under the table. <laughs> Speaking of, you haven't fucking worn it yet. I have not. You fucking jerk. Don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway uh, that's all the time we have is that all we got yeah we should definitely do a serial killer episode one of these days so we'll, if you guys killer. want us to do something about some serial killing the asses let us know give us give us some ones that not everybody knows if you know of a serial killer that's got a good backdrop story that nobody knows about really backdrop <laughs> <laughs> was like the backstory you know like, like his story I hope he has a really him. good uh, background on his phone you know <laughs> nice nice picture of mountains or something I want to see his headshot <laughs> <laughs> never a dull moment <laughs> never a dull moment yeah anyway yeah well, great well great yeah hit us up let's do it yeah hit, shoot us some comments Kylie listens to a really good podcast about like serial killers and stuff mm -hmm. um, called Morbid. Does she it's, listen to uh, K Love You Bye? Um, a little bit. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. definitely tuned in for the gift exchange. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, like we confirmed. Kylie definitely rigged the present, and she told us exactly <laughs> when she did it. <laughs> she yeah, was standing. I, was she, in the, I went to the shower before I came. It's, mm. She's like, as soon as I heard the water turn on, I was stuffing that present full of random <laughs> shit. How was the onion? Was it good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Uh, the cat treats, not so good. Yeah, you're not supposed to eat those. Yeah, yeah I assume those wouldn't be very good because I think we got them two years ago and they were in the Clarence aisle at Baumgars. They weren't. Ooh. So <laughs> <laughs> they weren't that good. So they were already expired a week after purchasing. Yeah. yeah. Two years ago. <laughs> Yeah, they weren't that good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. All right. So I hope you guys have a great new year, 2024. First week back yeah. in the new year. Holiday season is over. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Let's get back into the normal swing of life, and let's get some nice weather. After this month. Let's get some nice weather, hopefully rolling in the next couple months, and get back to the fucking. Well, you just jinxed it. We're about to get hammered with snow. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yep. <laughs> nope. All right. Anyway, well, thank you guys. We love the shit out of you. Love you guys. Love you guys. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. K. Okay, okay, bye. bye. I'm chasing their butt cheeks up and down the corn. All these girls have cowboy boots and wear their Wrangler. Fuck me fuck in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Take two. I'm chasing their butt cheeks up and down the corn. All these girls have cowboy boots and carry around their pitchforks. Chasing their butt cheeks. Up and down the corn All these girls have real nice butts And wear those Wrangler jean shorts <laughs> <laughs> Alright, dude uh, Pull chocks Pull chocks